All right, guys, welcome to the show. I got an awesome one for you today. So big news came out last night. Kanye West, Milo Yiannopoulos, and Nick Fuentes all went on Tim Pool show, and uh, it was a dumpster fire. So uh, we're going to lead with that. I'm going to play the clip for you. Basically, to sum it up, Kanye West stormed out after he got minor pushback on his Jewish conspiracy obsession. So we'll talk about that. Um, I also have... Europe is accusing the U.S. of war profiteering. Huh, you don't say. <laughs> that certainly doesn't sound like us, right? I mean, we're, we're, a, we're a very non-warlike people. Our military budget is un poquito. Does that mean small? I have no idea if that means small, but I think it means small. Anyway, um, I also got Raphael Warnock being super based and the right attacking him for being super based. Got an update on... What's going on with the Iranian soccer team? Um, there's some drama around that team, and there's some authoritarian arrests being made of people who criticize the government. And then later on in the show, uh, deadly police robots are now being floated. Kind of terrifying. And also, a 50,000-year-old zombie virus is making a comeback. That's lovely. So anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So, um... Tim Pool, I'm sure all of you know Tim Pool. We've covered uh, a couple of the things that he's said and done over the years. Um, he had on Kanye West, Nick Fuentes, and Milo Yiannopoulos on his show. Now, Tim Pool, this is the lane that Tim Pool occupies. He says, hey, man, I'm, I'm like a disaffected liberal and stuff. Like, pff, I'm a classical liberal, kind of like the Dave Rubin argument. But then he spends like 95% of his time uh, agreeing with the standard conservative Republican talking points. So that's who Tim Pool is. Um, his show is incredibly popular. I mean, his numbers are, are through the roof, and they've been for years now. So he had on these three characters. And, um, you know, I think the assumption going into it is that, yeah, I bet it's going to be a relatively cordial conversation with, like, minor pushback here and there. I mean, that's that's basically what I would have guessed uh, would have happened, um, but it didn't go like that. So Kanye only lasted, I think it was 26 or 27 minutes before he stormed out. So let's go ahead and watch. We'll see what led to it, and then we'll discuss it more. Saying is, look, they tried to medicate me. They, I was exhausted. They wrongly diagnosed me. And they, 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 when I asked them, how much lithium did you want to put me on exactly? It took them four days to answer because they were embarrassed about the amount, right? And I refused to take this, right? You understand that if I had taken the medication, I would not be here and it would have been, oh, woe is, he was deeply troubled. We miss him. We love his music, though. Well, they and would have Britney Spears, too. I mean, look at they they Michael Jackson. Or, or worse, yeah. So look at <laughs> what, what, what they did to Britney. When she went in, she was tired, she was exhausted, yeah. she was in a bad way. But 10 years of. My bad. I tried to pause it and I hit the wrong button. Um, so right off the bat, this is hilarious because this is a point that I've been making for a while now. Um, if Ye had taken the medicine for his bipolar disorder that he was diagnosed with, uh, then, yeah, he wouldn't be here in the sense that he wouldn't be doing career suicide. And having a, uh, you know, multi-week-long meltdown in front of everybody. So, ironically, the Jewish doctor who prescribed him medication for his bipolar disorder, that dude could have saved him. But, of course, in his mind, it's the exact opposite. It's like, oh, this guy is part of a giant Jewish cabal. There's a conspiracy that's trying to take me down and, and rob me. And this guy's leading the charge because he tried to have me wrongly diagnosed and he tried to make me take these drugs. So in other words, they flip it on their head completely. Now, uh, Milo brings up um, Britney Spears here. The issue with Britney Spears was not, as far as I understand it, uh, any medication issue. The issue with Britney Spears was the conservatorship, uh, which is, you know, legally she was under the, the guardianship of her dad and her dad was not the best steward of, of her interests. And so that was incredibly abusive, and she was in it for years and years and years and years. So yeah, in the case of what happened with Britney, it's a little bit different, um, and it's horrendous. But in the case of Kanye, like, dude, if you took that medicine, you'd probably be chilling right now, making another album, and an album that probably doesn't suck shit like your most recent ones. Mr. What did he say? Oh my God, what's that song? Poopity Scoop. He had a line of like, poop, poopity scoop, scoop of the poop. 
It's like, what happened to you, bro? What happened to you? Anyway, all right, let's continue. I'll, I'll run it back just a touch. About the amount, right? And I refuse to take this, right? You understand that if I had taken the medication, I would not be here and it would have been, oh, woe is, he was deeply troubled. We miss him. We love his music, though. Well, they I mean, would have Britney Spears, too. I mean, look at they would have Michael Jackson. Or, or worse, yeah. So, <laughs> look at what, what they did. Michael Jackson was begging for the propofol. So, that's, again, that's a different story. The doctor shouldn't have been unethical and given it to him in the first place, but Michael Jackson wanted that shit. He kept asking for that shit. Look at what they did to Britney. When she went in, she was tired, she was exhausted, yeah. she was in a bad way, but 10 years of that medication wrecked her brain. You can see it now. Yeah. You can see there's not much of her left. You, you mentioned Pasternak was the name? Uh, yeah. Yes, Harley Pasternak. That's the that's the uh, text message that you yes. posted that Here, we were talking about here, here's, before. Here's, that's here's, the lobotomy. Right, right, right. You know, yeah. Before the show, obviously, I'm getting a bunch of messages from people. People are hitting me up and they're like, you shouldn't host them. They're anti-Semitic. They're white supremacists. They're racist. I do find the idea, uh, I do find it funny or weird or whatever that, you know, Nick, they call you white supremacist. You're here working with or for, you know, one of the most powerful black men, one of the wealthiest and most famous. Tim. Tim, what are you doing, Tim? Tim, you know just as well as anybody that if you look at history, honestly, black nationalists slash black supremacists uh, and white supremacists actually get along. And they get along for the very simple reason they want to separate. They want to have separate nations. This is not, like, th this is well known. So, for him to bring that up, it's like, bro, you have a black friend, how can you be a white nationalist? I don't know, maybe the 970 fucking clips of of Nick Fuentes saying, like, I'm a white supremacist, bro. Maybe that overrides your your uh, your view that, hey, you, you got a black guy here, bro. He's a black guy. Obviously, you guys can't have any deleterious beliefs. But, uh... A lot of people were saying on the right, specifically, don't platform them. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I want to I want to understand what they're thinking, why they're thinking it. They're part of they're involved in what may be the biggest news story of the past week. And we have an opportunity to sit down and, and talk because the them. red media controls both sides. It just said it as simple as possible. Jerry Kushner was next to Trump. Ron Emanuel was next to Obama. But see, since 1940. Go ahead. Here he goes again. He can't stop, he can't help himself. Jared Kushner's Jewish. He's next to Trump, bro. <clears throat> Rahm Emanuel's next to Obama. Rahm Emanuel's Jewish. If you do a statistical breakdown of the people closest to those presidents, it is overwhelmingly going to be Christians, nominal Christians. Now, then is it fair to turn around and say there's a giant Christian cabal and conspiracy to control everything? I'd love to know the dynamics, yay, of how you think this works. What is it? Is, that, is it that Jews are evil by their nature? So they're like conniving and and scheming and stealing stuff, and that's just in their genes, it's in their DNA, is that the claim? Or is the claim that, no, it is a literal smoke-filled back room where all the Jews get together, and they go, how can we screw over everybody and everything and tank the world and push pornography and, uh, and, and bad ideas on society? Which is it? Which is, how does it work? I'd love to know the dynamics. Because what they do is they're so selective and they cherry-pick, and they see, this makes our case. Okay, but even if you talk about, and they do this all the time, like the captains of industry, the ones who really control the economy, they're the Jews. Um, there's like, Bill Gates isn't Jewish. He's a fucking patent shark with the vaccines, and he's single-handedly responsible for public health in a global sense. And this guy's made horrendous decisions, which have led to, you know, probably millions of deaths with the whole vaccine intellectual property thing. He's not Jewish. You know, uh, is Jeff Bezos Jewish? You know, uh, we could, uh, and... We could list like 10 different captains of industry who are incredibly powerful, who are not Jewish. So this whole notion just comes crumbling down. We live in a country that's what, about 70% Christian? So you're going to see a lot of Christian people in positions of power. And it's funny because again, he's, oh, you got the Jewish person next to the, the president. Well, hold on. But the president is the most powerful person. So then... Uh, Trump is nominally Christian. I don't think he really believes much of anything, but he's nominally Christian. Um, Obama is Christian. So why can't people flip it and be like, oh, the evil cabal of Christians who are controlling everything and destroying everybody? I was gonna say, isn't that an issue of these individuals? Like, you're, you're extrapolating. I'm, not having, I'm, going to get, I'm going to order with the last of my money that's available in a different account. I'm going to order a PJ before I sit and have another Lex Friedman setup conversation when, when I'm literally trying, they're trying to put me in jail for my opinion. But I Okay, he's such a fucking snowflake because Lex Friedman treated him with kid gloves. He was fair, he was kind, he provided pushback, but he did it in the most empathetic way possible. And he asked, oh, Lex Friedman, it was a setup. 
You want to be president of the United States of America, and you can't handle minor, kind pushback from a guy like Lex Friedman who wouldn't hurt a fly? Jesus Christ, it's so pathetic. I'm not, I'm not gonna have that opinion. I don't care about people, The peop, those are bots that are trying to tell you. We realize, look at Pence, he's so Trump out. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I would have never uh, wanted to do anything that hurt Trump. I'm on, I'm on Trump's side. Trump said things that hurt me. He lied about me, but I mean, he's known for lying. And when people used to tell me that, you know, he's a liar, it's like, you know, I went into the trenches for Trump. That's another conversation. There was no one in my position that wore that hat. And all of my surroundings exhausted me. It was like death by a thousand questions. I know I'm jumping to another thing. Yeah. But what I'm saying is I know you got a rep for your 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 people online, but it's no, like no, you got no. a person in real life that no. I I'm not with it, bro. I lost the I, I lost the money for the freedom of speech. And that's what makes me the only American that we know that really deserves to run the country. Cause everyone else, <laughs> your boy DeSantis, Trump, whoever <laughs> they 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 raise in a petri dish over on the Democrat side is is going to play the game. Look, look, and, like, here, here's what I was trying to get yeah. to. I, 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 you went right into the anti-Semite thing. I think it's something that should be talked about. But if you, if you start bringing this up, you're gonna ask my opinion on it. I'm gonna disagree with you. I didn't I, ask I, your opinion on it. You no, jumped but, but, into it. But, I, but you, I don't care about your opinion. I like your opinion on how we win an election. But I don't care about thing. anybody's opinion, bro. I lost. They tried to put me in jail. They blocked two, two. They, they tried to put me in jail. Billion dollars. I had like, but I told Farrakhan. I said, look, oh, is it anti-Semitic for me to say his name out loud? Like, I, I the told the minister. Yeah, the <laughs> minister. Like, I told Obama which, met, met with him. Too. Oh, he was. Yeah, I mean, the uh, Jewish people allowed uh, Obama to meet with the minister. Uh, no comment. You know, so uh, Farrakhan said, "What well, did he have the money? The contract for the next four years, if I hadn't done anything, would have been five hundred million dollars a year for four years. What I was fighting for was the IP, so my children could, uh, you know." Um, I'm sorry, just sometimes I think about seven thoughts at one time because anything I see, I come up with like seven answers. To it's not that you're bipolar and you're going through a manic phase. No, it's that you're such a genius and you're thinking of seven things at once and you can verbalize one of those thoughts coherently. I know. <laughs> and then just choose what it is. But, but I, when, the thing is when I said my children, the reason why my, my brain kind of blocked because it's like God is saying, you know, your, your children are going to be okay. The, you know, baby mama's got money, right? God is using me. He's breaking me down removing all of the you know richest person all of this so i can serve him and the more and more those things are taken away from me the more i can be empty and be a vessel the delusions of grandeur thing again i'm sure there's been some research on this but um people who are going through a bipolar episode there's got to be a link between that delusions of grandeur but then also like fundamentalist religiosity where they really think like god is speaking through me like this is god's actions and anecdotally i've seen that in my own life with people who have uh mental illness so uh, he thinks it's funny he thinks he's so fucking special and brilliant but go read the 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 definition or the symptoms of uh, with bipolar disorder he fits everyone to a t particularly the manic part of it right now eventually he'll get to the depression part of it but this is the manic part of it so go read it and you'll be astonished and be able to be used. And right now it's like, you're not going to take, if, if we can't, you're not going to take my pain away, right? The Jewish people say, it's the Holocaust, this happened, and you can't say anything about it. We can't take their pain away. No one's going to denounce the fact that they tried to lock me up. That's what, because every time I'm just holding. What he's talking about is an involuntary hold for a mental breakdown. That's what he's talking about. And those things are well established. They're a thing in almost every, you know, developed nation. And the idea is sometimes there are people who are clearly going through a mental break, who are a danger to others and themselves. They're making that very clear with extremely erratic behavior. And in a situation like that, you can do a temporary involuntary hold so that you help them. That's what he's talking about. And he's framing it like it's really nefarious. Stride, and it's like... I didn't. I thought I was more Malcolm X, but I find out I'm more MLK because as I'm getting hosed down every day by the press and financially, I'm just standing there. And when when I found out that they tried to put me in jail, it was like a dog was biting my arm, and I I I, I almost shed a tear, almost. But I still walked in stride through it. Yeah. I, I think I think they've been extremely unfair to you. I think. Who was they though? We can't say who they is. Can press. We? I'm not using the. I don't use the word as the, as the way I guess you guys use. I'm, I'm talking. It is about them it. though, isn't it? I mean, because <laughs> no. and, and because when you think about it, consider it. In 2018. What do you mean it's not? It, what, what do I mean? Like, uh, uh, okay, so how about, are you leaving? Are you afraid of the press? He's gone. I'll say it right now. Um, you, guys, I, I, you guys want to bring that stuff up? 
and then have think the we're discussion. not going like, to like, have the discussion. Like, you, you think? Be, okay. I'm going to get to more. Uh, let's we'll let Tim talk in a second here, but that's incredible. 21 minutes, 21 minutes. Kanye lasted in this conversation. That was the slightest pushback I've ever seen in my life. That was like, I don't know, bro. I don't know if I'm going to go full Jewish question right now. I don't know if I'm going to say all Jews are a problem and they're in some sort of cabal and they're destroying everything in society, bro. I don't know about that. They I, they have been unfair to you. Who's they, though? I don't, I don't think it's who you think it is. <gasps> How dare you? Again, you want to... You want to have the nuclear launch codes. You want to be the most powerful leader on Earth, the head of the strongest military that's ever existed in human history. And you can't handle slight pushback from Tim Pool, a guy who was probably ready to sit there and agree with you on 90% of the shit you were going to say. It is the utmost snowflakery I've ever seen in my life. And also, by the way, that shows... He can't handle the pushback. If somebody tries to logically break down why he's wrong in front of him, he doesn't have a response. The response is, but I did put the Jews and think bad things happened to me. Blame the Jews. And so you're wrong. I'm going to run out. God, it's so fucking sad. It's so fucking sad. All right, let's let Tim continue here. Yeah, he's going to come in here and say, Here's my pain. Here's my suffering. I'm gonna say I hear you, and then he's gonna say, and it was Jewish people, and I'm gonna be like, okay, but don't you consider? It's like, I'm not gonna do this. I, I refuse. Go, uh, make sure he's cool. All right, go for it. Excuse Luke and I will have a conversation, so uh, I can't say I'm surprised. What what what, well, what 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 do I even do other than ask him? Please elaborate on this. Are you referring to individuals? Or are you quite literally blaming an entire group of people for the fact that powerful individuals are causing you harm? I, I really wanted to ask Nick about his thoughts about MLK because I know they contradict uh, his comments about that. But but a, a, again, these are mass generalizations that don't really help anyone in my perspective. They just kind of sound. This is uh, Luke Rudkowski, by the way. I would describe his politics as like very libertarian. I don't know. He might be as far as an anarcho-capitalist. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's more like libertarian. Um, and so again, these are people who, they, they would have a lot of agreement with Kanye, but Kanye's just can't handle it. He's a massive, massive triggered snowflake like their opposition. They sound what they're kind of going against the woke mob that's always saying white men, white men are responsible for everything. When I see people just you. So you see the argument that they're using. They're like, look, our problem with the woke types is the identitarianism where they blame groups of people and they define gr whole groups of people like, you know, people of color are a victim. White males are the oppressors. And they go, we don't like that. So obviously, we're not going to like it if you're doing, you know, right wing identity politics. And part of that is like, we'll blame the Jews for all the problems. So this is the line that they're going with now. In, in a little bit, I'll let Tim go a little more here and Luke go a little more here. But in a little bit, I'm going to get to the comment section in Tim's own video. Mm. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> generalizations, it kind of cheapens the conversations. It cheapens uh, a dialogue that we could have here that, that I was planning to, to, to talk to Ye about specifically bringing up like, hey, let's actually talk about this in a real concise way. Let's not get emotional. Let's oh, not walk let's, out let's, of here. Let, let's let, let, let me tell ourselves. all you guys outright. I said, this is going to be a big issue before the show. Obviously, people are going to bring up the questions of anti-Semitism. Why don't we talk about the news? I want to hear what happened with this meeting. I want to understand what Ye 24 is. And then we can do a longer conversation about any of that stuff. And Ye literally in the first five minutes says, no, well, I want to talk about a group of people and, and point to them. Whatever, man. This, you want to know why? Look, you know, you're not going to sit here and you're going to walk out of the room. You're free to do so, man. But literally, I said a couple sentences about I don't think that's fair. Did I did I insult the man? He seriously can't handle he can't well, handle it. He also left during the Pierce Morgan interview he did, but he came back. So I, again, I, we should be able to have this conversation. What's up, Chris? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, man, I wanted to talk Here. to these guys about why they're meeting with Here, Trump. Chris. I want to know what happened with the dinner because we yeah. hear a lot of rumors about it. I want to hear about their and 2024 why, platform, which they were promising, which they were talking about, like they're going to be officially. Let me, know, let me, let me explain to everybody running. that, you know, unfortunate they walked out. Fine. Maybe they'll come back. Whatever. This is the biggest challenge with dealing with identitarianism. I do not believe that the predeterminate factor in someone's worth, value or agenda is based on immutable characteristics. Uh, Kanye is a black man. He does not represent all black people. There are Jewish individuals who work in, in, in banks. Dave Chappelle made the joke about Jewish people in Hollywood. And he said, but it doesn't mean anything. You got a lot of black people in Ferguson. It doesn't mean they run the place. The point is, me, I'm all about individualism, meritocracy, personal responsibility. So what you're going to see here is, so they're using, to be fair to them, they are applying 
that argument consistently, right? They're like, hey, if we don't like the left-wing version of identity politics, we also don't like the right-wing version of identity politics. So again, to be fair to them, that's like, okay, you're applying a consistent standard and saying, I'm just against identity politics across the board. Fair, fair. What you're about to see is his audience, a lot of his audience, does not agree with him because they like those anti-identity politics arguments when they're pointed at the left, but when you point them at the right, all of a sudden, they're fans of identity politics. They're fans of, you know, putting blame on whole groups of people and defending other groups of people. So it's it's funny because, you know, this is uh, this is something here, I'll make I'll make an analogy. This is like what happened with uh, Destiny. Destiny, political streamer. Back in the day, he used to make arguments when it comes to video games. Like, hey man, I don't care about the race or gender or identity of a video game character, because the whole point is like, I like the video game itself. So it, whether it's a black person who's the lead character, or a white person, or, or a woman, or whatever, it's fine, I don't care. And he cultivated a big audience uh, making those arguments. But then... Uh, when there were video games that came out that had more minority lead characters, uh, he was consistent in that argument. And he was like, I don't care about, you know, the race or gender of the of the leading character in the video game. And then his audience turned on him, even though he was making the exact same argument. Why? Because they didn't actually believe that that argument was true. It was a convenient argument for them because they just wanted it to be, like, straight white males as the leading characters. And so, that's when you realize, oh shit, I was like a, I was like a, a dupe and, and a figurehead for a movement that I didn't even know I was being a figurehead for, right? And so, this is exactly what's happening with Tim Pool here. Now, there's a question, you know, how, in Tim Pool's case, is it like, does he really not know the, the audience he's cultivated, you know, uh... And I don't know the answer to that. Maybe he doesn't know, don't know the audience he cultivated. Maybe he doesn't know the audience he cultivated. But let's go read some of the comments here. Anyone else go from totally stoked about this podcast to sheer and utter disappointment in mere moments? Okay, so that's a more benign one. Tim spent an hour and 47 minutes trying to find positive feedback in the chat about how he handled the situation. There were three. Man, this would have been such an awesome episode if they all talked for the whole two hours. I'm genuinely bummed Kanye walked out. Be patient with Ye, he's MK Ultra Survivor. Tim backed himself into a wall with this interview. Now, anytime someone mentions any group of people, he's going to have to take this same stance. But you doubt he will. Tim tried to nab all the Kanye Milo Fuentes fans in one go and lost them all in 20 minutes. The left thanks you for the clips and story. True, I do thank you for that. Imagine being Ye and explaining to someone how you just lost $2 billion in net worth Hundreds of millions in cash are frozen, and there's an effort to put you in jail, all by Jewish people, simply because you said Jews have power, and Tim Pool cuts you off and says, nah, I don't see the Jewish power thing. They're all just individuals. That's not even what Kanye said. He didn't say Jews have some power. Kanye said on the Drink Champs podcast, I want a little Jewish boy to go up to his Jewish dad and say, Daddy, what did we do wrong? That's what he's gone all in on extreme anti-Semitism. There was the report that in 2018 in that TMZ interview, they cut out of it the fact that Kanye West praised Hitler. He said, I like Hitler. I like the Nazis. I like some of their ideas. This should have been an exclusively uncensored show on the website. You can't double dip, Tim, but you'll learn that the hard way, I guess. Tim, you need to get over having to be the smartest or most moral guy in the room. You're going to tank any big-name guest shows in the future just like this one. Tim needs a reality check. Ye is bearing his soul. Crazy what this man has been through. The best part of this whole debacle was Tim's Tim unaccepting to believe he did anything wrong here. Laugh my ass off. Tim, your show has grown from the guests you have on. Don't forget that. Ye's lived in the world he's talking about for a long time, yet people here, scared of their own shadow unless they're terminally online and fully focused, are telling him he knows nothing. It's funny as fuck. Uh, this comment was posted by Lil Bubs, blah, blah, blah. Tim, Tim Pool Show is a complete paradox of content. Let's see the rest of this. Tim wants to be seen as the impartial fair play interviews. 
Tim also needs to be the smartest guy in the room. Tim also needs to bring on controversial guests to boost his viewership. But Tim can't be controversial because it will hurt his advertising. One main outcome of this time in this is Tim's ego is bigger than Kanye's. Huge fail, Tim. Can't even let the guests speak. LOL, you completely blew this thing. Tim blew it. He's meant to be the interviewer, not the center of attention. Can't believe I'm going to say it, but for this one episode, Tim really should have just let Ian take the lead. So in other words, Ian would have let Ye talk more, should have went with Ian. Actually surprised more of Tim's guests haven't done this. <laughs> we know your views, Tim. We hear them every day. Every day. Way to make the interview show all about you. Welcome to Elite Journalism. You're now just like everyone else. How far you have strayed. Tim stepping in it, then tiptoeing around it. Then tiptoeing around is pretty funny. Time to face up to the facts. To find out who rules over you, simply find out who you can't criticize. We all know Tim. We all know Tim knows the world knows. Entrained visceral responses from Tim and people like that only prove Ye's point. If Kanye West had said equally disparaging thing, things about black people, he would also have all of his deals pulled. In fact, when he said the thing about how George Floyd died because of fentanyl, he had his deals pulled. Uh, if he had said equally disparaging thing about Asian people or women or any group of people, he would have had his deals pulled. So by this person's logic, do all of those groups rule us? Is there a secret cabal of all of those groups trying to keep us down? Fucking insane. I really like how in two Milo episodes now, this entire cast has been exposed more than ever before. Wow. When, look at this one. Wow, when I listen to Kanye, it's like God is speaking through him straight to my soul. The interview was not about your thoughts. It was about finding out Ye's thoughts. Anyway, I am now definitely voting for Ye. All right, so there you go. Tim's own audience turned on him. You want to know why? Because, like I described before, he says he's a disaffected liberal. He also says, you know, I'm kind of like a centristy type. He, he embraces the label that people have used derisively against him of fence-sitter. Um, but again, 90 to 95% of the stuff he talks about on his show sort of boosts standard conservative Republican talking points. And so that's the audience that he's cultivated. He's cultivated intentionally or not, kind of like a far-right audience. And so now, you have a more pure, distilled form of far-right politics on your show in Milo, Nick Fuentes, and Kanye. And so that's the team they're on. And even pr giving minor pushback and saying, I don't know about this anti-Semitism thing. Let me explain why I think it's wrong. They're not, they're not listening. They don't care. You're not going to shake them of that core belief because a lot of these people are TFGs too far gone. So, damn. There's an old saying, you made your bed, now you're going to sleep in it. In a sense, I do feel bad for Tim, though. You know, I do. Because I don't know, again, I don't know if it was intentional or not, if this, like, lane he chose for himself is intentional or not. But now, he's seeing the audience that he cultivated. I watched a video, TJ Kirk, the Amazing Atheist, was talking about this. And um, he made a great point. He said, people have been going after me saying, oh, your channel's dead. You know, your channel's dying. You don't get the views that you used to. Um, you know, your audience has shrunk, et cetera, et cetera. He said, I made a choice for that to happen. Why? Because with the content he was making, he was attracting this kind of an audience. And when he realized that, he slammed on the brakes and went in reverse and stayed true to his principles, told people what he really thought, and then lost the audience as a result. So, he thinned the herd on purpose because he wasn't willing to play the role of feeding far-right talking points from a nominally different perspective. So, he knew it was going to hurt his viewership, and he did it anyway. So, that's a principled thing to do. Now, this is the first instance I've seen of, of Tim sort of pissing off his giant audience in a clear way. And it might be a little bit of a crossroads. We'll see what he ends up doing with this. Are you going to double down on your more reasonable take of, yeah, Jew hating is bad, or will you kowtow to the mob? Um, crazy. 
Because, you know, everybody everybody on Twitter, certainly in left-wing Twitter circles, were like, Jesus fucking Christ, Kanye is such a triggered snowflake, he can't handle the tiniest pushback over his insane Jewish conspiracy obsession. Um, and it made Tim Pool and, and, and Luke look massively reasonable in contrast to that. But again, Tim's own audience, a lot of them are like, no, I'm with Ye. Wow. Well... <laughs> I guess these are the 60,000 voters that Ye got the last time he ran, which is super fucking embarrassing. I mean, he'll get destroyed this time, too, even if he runs as a Republican. But um, it's kind of crazy how uh, the cat is now out of the bag in a way it hasn't been previously in regards to anti-Semitism since, of course, World War II. There's more forthright anti-Semitism than I've ever seen before. And um, it looks like they feel like they have momentum. So we'll see what happens from here, but... Wow, what a clip. Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.